Oh, hello, and welcome to The Sunday Show, brought to you by Black Circle Brewing Company, Let's Comedy, and Rocket Ship Comedy. Boy, do we have a special night in store for you. We've got a lot of content that's ready for your viewing. And if you're ready, let's start the show. <laughs> After a hard day's work, there's nothing I love more than a good old fresh squeezed Pepsi. But you know what I love more than Pepsi? This brand new Pepsi with extra pulp. Ah, kind of minty. Dude, uh, that's my dip spit. It's okay, man. It's okay. Everybody's had a little bit of dip before. Pepsi with extra pulp. This product does not exist. Don't drink it. Somebody get this man a coat. from the Cat Cafe, the first time I ever did the show. Uh, and then they're like, you want to help run it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> I, uh, my cats, when I adopted the cats, their names were uh, Mayor Cutie and Mrs. Peepers. Uh, so I changed that shit, I changed it immediately. <laughs> I was pretty smart. I named my cats Mom and Dad. That's what I changed their names to. Which is weird, because there's a cat in there right now named Mom. <laughs> I'm like, you're not my mom. <laughs> You look similar. Your name's Auntie. That's your name. No, uh, name my cat's mom and dad is great because like I have the best excuse forever now. If someone's like, "Hey man, you want to help me move this weekend?" I can just be like, "Oh, this weekend, man, I can't do it this weekend. I'm hanging out with mom and dad all weekend." So. <laughs> Backfired one time. Went to work in a bad mood. My coworker's like, "Tyson, what's wrong?" And I was like, "You know, mom's not eating the cat food I bought her." <laughs> Not getting anything else till she finishes it. I'm not made of money, you know. <laughs> Let's see here. I uh, I was at the gym. We were talking about working out earlier. I was at the gym and uh, I accidentally made eye contact with a, a guy doing squats <laughs> while he was crying. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, uh, why is there a mirror here? <laughs> It's a dumb joke and I love it. All right. I gotta, I'm trying to stay young because my hairline doesn't want me to. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm wearing a hat. I have shitty hair. Uh, it's on its way out. It's not good. It's not great. Uh, my hair is. I got my hair is so shitty. I've been called a ginger pretty often, which like it's not. It's just thin and I'm a pink person. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. You know. Like, I, I'm trying to enjoy it because I'm going to go full bald or at least a fryer tuck. That's a hot look, right? 
just get a burlap robe and carry around a cask of mead all day. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know, helping rob the rich or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to I'm trying to enjoy my hair while I can because I know it's on the way out, but it's hard because like right now I can't even have like too hard of a day. Because if I get stressed out, I'm just like, oh, it's been. Oh boy, it's been, oh, mm, it's been a rough day. Yeah, is it down enough for the joke? Is it good? <laughs> it's not, yeah, I look like I sell used divorces. So I, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's either that or like I live in a rundown gas station. It's one of the two. <laughs> Just standing by the door being like, y'all need some basement gauges? <laughs> I'm gonna put this back on for the rest of the set <laughs> to hide my shame. All right. <laughs> 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 I love craft beer. Indian, I'm just hard change. Uh, I love craft beer. Indian has got a lot of really good craft beer, and I love it. I was at Menazoa, I did that show. They had a beer there called uh, Puppy Slumber Party. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. I want it, I need it. Give me a litter, you know? <laughs> I need it. But I was at another bar, I was in Bloomington drinking, and uh, I noticed they had a beer, it was called uh, Teddy Bear Kisses. And I went, that was good, and I was like, are we just naming beers after shit dudes wish they could say in public? <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm gonna start that brewery, I'm gonna start that brewery. I'm gonna make a bar that is just named, it's just the $6 a pint therapy, it's just whatever a dude needs to say deep down. That's when I'm going to name my beers. That's it. <laughs> like a big burly son of a bitch is going to walk up to the, the, the bar and he's going to look at the menu and he's just going to be like, Hey, what's the ABV on I always wanted to be a dancer? <laughs> <laughs> is it hoppy? Oh God, I hope it's hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> Guy comes up next to him and he's just like, Ooh, oh hey, can I get, ooh. I, I would just love a hug from my dad right now. <laughs> uh, can I get a hug from my dad? Oh, you were out. Okay, I will settle for, I will settle for punching holes in drywall. <laughs> Guy next to him is just like, hey, what's a dick taste like? Okay, and uh... I should make myself laugh, but here we are. <laughs> uh, let's see here, I'm a comedian, uh, which means I'm also a waiter, and... Uh, <laughs> for, don't plot you, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know I have really terribly put good friends. Uh, no, I'm, a, I'm a waiter. For a long time, I was a comedian, a waiter, and a busboy. And boy, I hated, be I hated being called a busboy. I hated it. It felt just demeaning, you know, being called a busboy. So I preferred the term professional raccoon. That's what it seemed That just seemed way better to me. It seemed like it fit, you know? I was in charge of the garbage. I'd steal people's silverware. If the customers talked to me, I'd freeze and run away. <laughs> It's people, like, the repetition's the thing I hate about being a waiter, because I hate the repetition, because people, they're always like, uh, it's never, they're like, hey, I got a crazy request, but it's never a crazy request. It never is. It's always just, like, some waspy white woman from Carmel just being like, I have a crazy request. Can I get some lemons for my water? I'm so bad. I'm so naughty. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> He's like, I go to brunch with her! <laughs> uh, oh, God. So, uh, uh, for a long time, I wasn't making a lot of money, so what I would do to help me save money, what I would do is if a customer didn't finish their food, I would. And, uh, <laughs> nothing gross, just like their soup and stuff. It's fine. <laughs> But the, like, so the thing is, I, I, I work with a lot of Hispanic people, and I love talking to them, learning about different cultures, it's amazing and great. 
and I was talking to this lady I work with, and she was like, oh yeah, most people in Mexico have nicknames. And I was like, dope, what would my nickname be? And then she looked at me and she was like, you'd be, you'd be Mapache Grande. I was like, hell yeah, what is that, like big man? And she was like, no, giant raccoon. <laughs> Why is it always raccoons? <laughs> I got up until one more got here. Uh, but like the thing is, I love eavesdropping at my job, and I was walking by this table, and there was this really, there was this really old white dude, and he was so mad about something. So I was like, I gotta hear this, <laughs> and I just hear him go, "Man, I can't believe they're gonna name my granddaughter Zayden. I hate kids today and their ridiculous names." And I was like, "Ah, oh, thanks, Eustace." <laughs> How about you hit up your old pal's Humphrey Herb permanent horse and you hop in your jalopy? Go see some old. Go see your old pal's Ulysses Willard Thaddeus, you know? Heard some shit going down at the speakeasy. You might have to slap Sebastian for juking a gym with the jealous Jessup and Jasper. <laughs> have an absence with Axel and confess to Cornelius. You're really glad no one's running around here with a ridiculous name. Isn't that right there, Orville and Oxnard? All right, guys. <laughs> I gotta get you. I'm gonna punch you right away. Thank you very much. Now summon death to your doorstep, courtesy of Black Circle Brewing. <laughs> I'm dead end, and I look forward to beating, I mean greeting you, with ice cold beer served straight from hell. <laughs> So follow the link below for more information. Until then, sweet screams and hellish nightmares. <laughs> All right, hey there, folks. I am the Money Maniac, and here we are. Welcome to the show. Before we get on to this week's investments, let's cover what we covered in the past week. Last week, I told you to buy, 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 buy Genericorp. Buy the hell out of these guys. And where did they go? Where did the NAD sack gods take us with Genericorp? Well, they took us up. Six points. Six points. I fucking nailed it. I... God damn nailed it, and I didn't even use the nail. Ah, oh, shit, here we are. What else did I tell you? I told you, I told you. You heard it from this guy right here. I told you, buy Meat Corp, buy Meat Corp, sell Underwear Corp. Get them out of here. Get the underwear out of here, because you know what? It's springtime, ladies and gentlemen, and panties are dropping, Ow! and the wieners are going up. That's what I said, and so you bought Meat Corp. Let's look, let's look at the Underwear Corp. Where are they at? They are down 60 underwear on the floor. Look at that, everybody. I'm really good at my job. All right. Then what else did I tell you? I told you about this new IPO. This new IPO that's out of the Monolith Corporation. You guys love them. I love them. Everybody loves these guys. We told you about the Future Science IPO that they are releasing as an experiment. It's not even something they really want to make money on. They're just fucking around. They're crazy like me, and that's great. That's the great shit we like. So let's see. Where are they at, guys? Let's see where they're at. Let's get on the old computer. The computer isn't working. The computer's fucking broke. Why? Where are they? What's going on? I can't see anything on the computer. Uh, I thought I forgot to just turn it on. I didn't. It's broke. It's fucking broke. If somebody doesn't get in here and fix this goddamn thing, I'm gonna kill again. Somebody get in here, fix this goddamn computer. Somebody look it up on their phone. Look it up on your phone. You tell me where the hell future science is. What's the future of future science? What is it? Down six? <laughs> Not zero, six. They're down six. They're down. Future science, you're dead to me. 
You made me no money. You lost me money. You lost my people money. You're dead to me. Not only that, but I don't even like the number six anymore. The number six is dead to me. Get it out of here. If I was Satan, wouldn't even have a number anymore. There wouldn't be a sign of the beast. You just have to fucking know because there'd be no more sixes out there. Also, I got to get rid of one of my kids now. One of my kids. I got six. Now I got to knock it down to five. And Huey, you're the one. You're the one that's leaving. You know why? Daddy loves you. Daddy really fucking loves you. But you're six. Not only are you six, but you're the sixth son. You got to go. I'm down six kids. Everybody, I've lost a kid. I'm down a kid now. Because this computer doesn't work. And future science is bullshit. I'm coming for you. Me, me, coming for you, future science. You guys ain't safe anymore. I'm coming for you and the monolith corporation and all of your families. I don't like losing a son. I'm coming for you. I want in there. I want in here. Somebody get me in here. You guys are watching. I know you're out there. Somebody, one of you fucking shitty ass techs, get me in this goddamn thing. I'm going to reach through you and I'm going to use your shit. Sorry guys, that was, that was weird. <sighs> Didn't even feel like myself for a minute. It was familiar though. Felt like the night Carol died. That makes sense. I always said, Carol, you are a soul sucking fucking whore from beyond. And you can't even leave me alone in death? You've got to possess me after you've died? I think boost is gonna last uh, anywhere between three and nine seconds. When I first met Luke, I had a similar reaction that lots of people who have met Luke for the first time have, which is, well, this is one arrogant kid. I wonder how many times he has to be punched in the face before he admits he's wrong. Hi everyone, if you're watching this, it uh, probably means that I'm dead after my embarrassing boxing loss to Luke Basil. Uh, please bury me with all my snacks and uh, always remember me for how fat and dumb I was. Bye bye. Welcome to quarantine folks. My name is Jeff Goltz and you might know me as the ventriloquist with sex appeal. <laughs> uh, it's an honor to be on the show. Gwen invited me on and I was like, what is this show about? I looked it up, I watched it, and I was like, wow. That's mediocre. So I'm a perfect fit. Uh, so if a puppet wasn't a gimmick enough, I'm gonna play uh, the piano, a song that I wrote uh, four and a half years, or three and a half years ago. And it was written, um, it's advice for young Christian women who are, um, who are facing temptation. Cause I saw a YouTube channel that was teaching you know, girls to be celibate. And the, the, the lady said, you know, my husband can't satisfy me the way God can. And I went, ugh. So um, here's a little 
advice for Christian women who are facing the temptation of sex and and uh, you know if they just keep up the abstinence and wait till the dam breaks and have a kid. I mean, we don't want that. So this is some advice. I'm not saying I know anything. I'm white and slow, but we'll see. <laughs> Getting down with vibration It's a gift from our creator A vibrator It's a gift from our creator A vibrator You're not a bitch, whore, or slut If you bust a nut You're not a bitch, whore, or slut If you bust a nut this is not an attack, it's just a suggestion Based on my weird obsession on how you're bubbly on the outside But on the inside, sad and cold God didn't save you, he just stole your soul It's a gift from my creator A vibrator It's a gift from my creator Satisfaction from God, now I get it from a vibrating rod. It's a gift from my creator. So when you're feeling frisky, pull out your secret weapon. You can masturbate instead. It's kind of contraception. I mean, if you if you don't fuck. Let's cut to a clip. Previously on Max Dick Kicker. <laughs> and now Max Dick Kicker in episode one, Tolerance. Hey, hippie. You boys have some balls. Get him, Terry. Boy, you are wicked drunk. Goddamn right, you son of a bitch. We're the best it's ever been. By the, <laughs> have you been stimulized by the government? Honey, spend that money on a good local business, not Nintendo. Give it to us here at Black Circle. If you order $30 or more of merchandise on Black Circle Store Envy every Wednesday, I will come and pay your family a visit and give you some of that delicious beer you've been craving. So stay home and let me do the hard lifting, if you know what I mean. Bye. Oh, back from the big trip, huh? How was it? Oh, hey, yeah, I know it was, uh, it was really great. What was that? The trip. It was, uh, I had an awesome time. What's, uh, what's, what's, what's that? 
I'm not really sure what you're talking about, mate. You, you picked up an accent. You picked up an accent. I just this is how I always talked. I, I'm. You're gone for three days. I mean, you don't just like pick that. You know, you just don't pick up an, an accent. You know. This is just how I talk. I don't really, I'm not really trying to do anything. Maybe it was just because I was immersed in the culture a lot. The culture. Well, the thing is, you have a distinctly Australian accent right now, but uh, you're actually in England. So that's the other part about it that I was kind of confused about. You know. I was hoping around the countryside with Michael Evan, kangaroos. Okay, I get it. I get it. Like you're, you know, you're a big world traveler. <laughs> there you know, we like go. you're a big man. And you get to go on jet planes and ride. And Coach, whatever. All right, man. I get what this is about. You're jealous of eating all these cultures on you. Wow, dude. You think that's what this is about, dude? Because I'm not cultured? You want me to throw you a couple shillings so you can just be as cultured as I am? Wow. You, you, you didn't even go to Australia. Why don't you knock down a couple forces yourself, man? I'll take you down to the pool. Dude, drop it. I'm done with you right now. Just... You didn't come here and make me feel bad in my indigenous culture. Wow! Oh my gosh, you're really doing this. Be wrong, back, boomerang, never root. Well, this is not a thing. Like, just stop. Just stop it. Rock, snap, I never laugh. Zig, rig. Oh, yeah, I get it. You can't stop. Rock, my This raw livery. You know what? You need to calm down, all right, my... Is that a real gun? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the prop gun that I got you guys? The prop one doesn't... We, Fire? We wanted the realistic gun sound effect. Well... It took, we can get that off the internet. He, he'll just shoot it. We'll get the sound on camera. Yeah, it's loaded? You have bullets in there. Yeah, I mean, I got five chances, so we're... Wait, why are you going to shoot bullets at Alex? I'm going to duck. You're going to duck a bullet? Yeah. So I'm going to count uh, up or down from... <laughs> He's going to shoot it. And then I'm gonna duck, and then right after that I'm gonna bite the, the blood capsule. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's gonna grab his chest and bite the blood capsule. Wait a sec. Did I bite it? I think I bit on accident. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most I have an after. I bit on it. I bit <laughs> gosh, <yeah. laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. And you were worried. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's great. So high, so high, I wanna kiss the sky. Put the weed in the paper. What's up everybody, it's your girl Witch Hit, here with another dance cover. This week I'm going to be covering Talia Favia's choreography to Beyonce's Mine, featuring Drake, as filmed by Tim Milgram. It's this vid right here. Man, the moves are sick. It felt so good, like, moving my body again and getting back into it, because I've been out of the game for a while, and I'm coming back strong, you guys. All right, so listen, like, subscribe, follow, uh, tickle, sneeze, snort. Just check out the video. Love you. Big deal. 
Cause I got big deals and I got little things I got everything I'm asking for But you Stop making a big deal out of the little things Let's get carried away Come right now, you know where I stay I just wanna say you're mine, you're mine I just wanna say you're mine, you're mine Fuck what you heard, you're mine, you're mine All I'm really asking for is you You're mine, you're mine I just wanna say you're mine, you're mine Hey, Sunday show, Shanda Sung, coming to you live from my bedroom where I'm hiding from my family. I'm very happy to be with you guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you for everyone who's tuning in. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have an excuse to brush my hair because it's been a month and I've just been inching closer and closer to white girl dreads out of laziness and I really needed it, for real. I did not put on makeup though. I won't, I can't do it. I can't put on makeup to sit in my own house. It just, that's not who I am. And uh, you know, I think I'm very brave for posting this. Honestly, um, we'll just see how the video turns out and then we'll see if I feel brave or stupid. Um, anyway, yeah. I hope you're being safe. I hope you are taking some time for yourself to do things that you enjoy. I'm having a hard time doing that because I am quarantined with my family. My husband and my three kids, they are seven, three, and one, and they're destroying my house. They're trashing the place. It's a miracle that this building is still standing. They're, uh, they're running wild. I, my parenting standards have plummeted. You know, I don't get them dressed all day. They're just shoeless and in underwear, running around outside, covered in mud, screaming like wild, feral wolves. It's, it's ugly, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, I've also had the humbling experience of suddenly becoming my son's first grade teacher. And um, that's been fun. You know, um, a month ago, I would have told you with complete confidence that I know everything a first grader knows. And I'm finding out that's not true. And it's hard, you know. Uh, the other day I, I explained to him that he needed to answer a problem in a complete sentence. And he asked me what that was. And um, I couldn't tell him. I know what a complete sentence is, I do. I know what it is. Can I explain it to anyone? No, absolutely not. Google to the rescue. My search history is embarrassing honestly it's not been good uh, some of my friends a lot of people uh, that I've noticed have been uh, taking this time to adopt pets and I get it you know that's good that they're uh, they're taking in an animal and um, and I understand why you know if you need that companionship if you're in isolation by yourself it's just so far from my experience so far I mean I've been killing plants on purpose because I can't have anything else in this family asking me to take care of it. I can't. I've got a bunch of dead plants in my garage. Please don't tell my husband what I've been doing. He's gonna find them eventually. It's not good. I can't imagine adding another animal to this chaos. It's crazy. Um, I've been struggling also a little bit with my creativity. You know, normally that's something that, that comes pretty easily to me. I'm. I'm a creative person. I'm crafting a lot and sewing and writing and things and I've just had no desire to do it. So I've, I've taken myself back to the basics. I did, I did what I think can reset myself and I went to the T-ball of creativity, which is adult coloring books. I set it up for me. Make it easy, okay? I wanna get a home run with no thinking. I'm picking colors, I'm putting them on the page, I'm tuning out. And it's been working, it's great. I highly recommend it, for sure. 
I am here with my husband and it's been going pretty well, you know, uh, we've been together for a very long time and so we're pretty used to each other, but it, you know, it's a roller coaster being in isolation with, uh, with another adult. Uh, I'm sure anybody who's with, um, with a significant other can attest to that. Um, you know, there's a morning where I woke up and, and I thought, you know, I'm so glad we're in quarantine together because he really is my favorite person. And then an hour later, I thought, I swear to Christ, if this motherfucker keeps moving the phone chargers, I'm filing papers. So, you know, it's a process. We're working through it. We'll be all right. It helps that he's hot. He's very hot. Um, I can say that because people tell me that he's hot, so I know it's true. I've even had people who know me and then meet him tell me, you should have warned me about how hot he is. Which is fucking rude, I think. Is it not? I mean, I would hope that anybody who knows me would just assume that I have a trophy husband, right? I'm a catch, damn it. I just don't like it when people look at me like I'm the Kevin James in my relationship, right? It's not good. I don't like it. That's... I miss the gym. This is a fun segue. I miss the gym. I do. That's such a douchey thing to say. I really feel I got a look, oh, the only place I feel at home is when I'm pumping iron. That's not it. I, you know, I went to the Y and I swam to work out and I loved it. It was great. And I miss doing that. I would, um, I would wear a bikini to swim at the Y because all of the lifeguards there are 21 year old boys and they need to see me in a bikini. It's important. 21 year old female bodies are great. They're everywhere. They're all over the place, but it's not realistic. Okay. These 21 year old boys need to see a body with some miles on it, right? A body that's been through some shit. It's a public service I'm providing to these young men that they see this body in a bikini and this thing, it is incredible. All right. This Bonnie can eat an entire medium pizza in one sitting and has twice since I've been stuck at home. All right. This body did a keg stand of Killian's Irish red, followed it with a shot of warm gin and didn't puke on my wedding night. Yeah, I told you I was a catch. This body made three people. Yeah. And two of them are boys. That means that I took my husband's penis and I used it to make more penises. Think about that. That's unbelievable. How did I do that? I don't even have one. But my uterus took a look at a dick and said that I could do that. And it did. That's amazing. And four, four balls I made. Yeah, that's what I want you to remember about my set. Four balls. And the gentlemen who are tuning in, remember that. Because there will be a day in the future where you want to look at another man and tell him to grow some balls. And I want you to remember, your mommy grew yours. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and supporting comedy in this crazy time. Thank you uh, very much to Black Circle Brewing and to the Sunday show. I hope you're all taking care of yourself and staying well. Take care. Love you.
How wonderful was that, huh? <laughs> it was quite a doozy. A lot of uh, funny stuff, a lot of uh, other funny stuff, and then some music that uh, really tore the roof off this thing. Am I right? <laughs> uh, well, thanks again for joining us. And uh, don't forget, uh, we're here every Sunday digitally until we can see you in person. Well, for me and little Miss Randall, have a great week next week, and thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Bye.